Hi everyone, long time no see, unfortunately, because things have gotten busy for me lately and things are only gonna keep getting busier for me from here on out. But I'm gonna try my best to at least keep up with the tea updates and I have so many other videos that I wanna make, but we'll see how things go. But yeah, three months on tea. This update will be short and I'm thinking about doing bi-monthly updates instead of monthly from now on because really there isn't that much to talk about. A lot of it is just continuation on from previous months. If I switch to bi-monthly tea updates, that means at least I can get another video of another kind out at least once a month, so I don't know. Anyways, refer back to previous videos if you want more detailed stuff. But if I don't mention anything in this video, just assume that it's probably ongoing and it just, there hasn't been enough change to warrant mentioning it. As with previous videos, anything that could be considered TMI or that just might be off-putting to people, I will group together towards the end of the video and there will be warnings in the video itself before I talk about those things. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. First things first, there hasn't been much change in terms of body hair, facial hair, nothing really to write home about. I have seen minimal hair growth on my forearms, on my legs, backs of my shoulders, maybe in my back, I can't see. And here, upper lip, it's very minimal, it's not much at all, and so uh, there's not really much to say about that. I think my family just isn't particularly hairy, body hair wise, facial hair whatever. But yeah, knock on wood, I don't want to jinx myself there and then suddenly I get a bunch of body hair or facial hair. My voice continues to drop little by little. I don't know how much of a change you can hear because what I hear in my head and what other people actually hear is different still. It was different pre-tea and it's still different, of course, while on tea. So I noticed a drop and I have noticed drops from the beginning, like the first injection, the first two weeks. Those changes that I perceive as happening don't always manifest themselves to others. So yeah, do you hear a change? In the beginning, I noticed much more noticeable changes. I noticed the change in where my voice came from, it reverberating more and stuff like that. It felt more dramatic to me, maybe just because I was hyped up and super excited about it. Now it seems like voice changes and changes in general on T have become more subtle or maybe I'm just not as hyper aware of it anymore, I don't know. But yeah, gradual changes. I have to listen back to voice recordings of myself to even like compare the change and be able to say that, oh, I've changed this much because to me, it's just so gradual, so subtle that it's very comfortable how slow things are happening. And it's not even really slow if I stop and think about it. It's three months and my voice has already dropped this much. I don't know if that's slow or not, but the current pacing is really nice. I like where I'm at right now. I noticed that other people are noticing a change in my voice. Definitely now they're noticing it, but they're still not commenting on it because I think there's still that, that bimyo vague gray area where they're like, is this just my imagination? Was their voice always like this? Or do they have a cold or blah, blah, blah. It's not, the change isn't striking enough for them to actually feel confident in questioning it or vocalizing their notice of it. I don't know. I can't speak English right now, but yeah. People are noticing. I notice them noticing, but they're not saying anything. Acne pimples are obviously still a thing and they suck, but as I mentioned in my last video and in previous videos, this, my face, it makes it look much worse than it actually is. It's not that bad. It's just that I have anxiety and skin picking issues and yeah, I have a lot of scarring on my face and shit. I'm doing my best to try and manage skin picking and right now fidget spinners and my fidget ring are really helping and if you have issues with skin picking or just like fidgeting, at first I wasn't a huge fan. I wasn't really impressed by these fidget spinners, but now, I don't know, they've grown on me and they're really nice for when my hands just need to idly do things and not fuck with my face. And especially the ring is the most useful thing for me because it's always with me regardless of whether I have something else, a fidget spinner in my pocket or not. But aside from that, I have no advice really because I'm not good at skincare, obviously. And makeup and that shit is not my thing, so yeah. Something that I keep 
forgetting to mention in my videos, but has been a thing for a while now, is an increase in body temperature. And by that, I mean I'm just generally warmer all the time. I've always been what Japanese people refer to as samugari, and that means that I get cold easily. And that might be related back to the anemia that I talked about in my last video, but I think it's also just the fact that I was born and raised in a desert where it's really hot and me and cold just don't get along. Anyway, since starting tea, I I don't get cold as easily. Usually in winter, I have to wear lots of layers, thermals, gloves, thermal socks, blah, blah, blah. But this winter, it felt warmer. There was less of a need in me to layer as much. I was able to make it through the winter a lot more comfortably than I ever have. And I don't think, it's not because this winter, this past winter was unseasonally warm or something. It's just I was warmer and that had pluses and minuses. For example, in my bed, I couldn't sleep under my favorite blanket anymore because it was just too warm. And summer is coming up and Japanese summer and binding and with this blanket on my head at all times, that makes me like three times as hot as everyone else. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to Japanese summer while being just generally physically hotter and binding and hair and ugh. And also related to that, um, I think I kind of mentioned it in my last video, but body odor change is very much a thing on tea. And it's not just that the smell changes, it's also stronger. And so I've had to relearn personal hygiene because I just have to approach it in a different way. What worked for me before isn't really working for me now. And going forward into Japanese summer, yeah, is gonna be interesting navigating that. And one last thing before I go into TMI stuff, although maybe I should also put a content warning here, I'm about to talk about weight. And if that is a sensitive topic for you or potentially triggering, you might want to skip over the next minute or so of video. Since starting tea in January, I have gained two kilos. I think that translates into like four and a half pounds for you Americans out there. That's a significant gain for me because I my weight has been pretty consistent consistent over the years and hasn't fluctuated much at all. But in the past three months, I've gained two kilos and I don't know where it's coming from because I feel like my eating habits haven't changed that much. I don't know, maybe I am eating more. I haven't been paying enough attention. Maybe I should pay more attention to how much I'm eating, but yeah, 2K, yeah, it is what it is, but I'm not exactly happy about that. Okay, so this is where I talk about TMI stuff. If you do not not want to hear about body parts and bodily functions and stuff, then skip ahead to the time point that's on the screen right now. And then you can see the ending part of the video without having subjected yourself to the TMI in between. Ready, go. So. To my surprise, this past month, monthly hell has not been a thing, really. I had some spotting when it came time for that time of the month, and that's all. I didn't have any of the cramps or the other symptoms that I usually have, and that was an unexpected surprise for me. And I say unexpected because, yes, it's known that tea will stop your period, but I'm not on what is considered to be the standard full dosage for a trans man or what is generally prescribed to AFAB people in general. So I did not expect for my monthly hell to actually stop, or at least not at three months, even if it did stop eventually. And so yeah, unexpected surprise. I'm happy about it, but at the same time, I feel like I can only be so happy about it since it is specifically tied to being on tea and I don't intend to forever be on tea. So when I do stop tea, it's just gonna come back. So yeah, I'm happy, but apprehensively, containedly happy. I guess. Another TMI thing that is worth talking about is libido, changes in libido. And I talked about this in my last video about how my low libido has returned on T after having disappeared when I started antidepressants. Well, now it's not a low libido anymore. It's pretty safe to say that it's on the high side, higher than it's ever been in my entire life. And it is really, really fucking annoying, at least for me. As an asexual person, who isn't interested in sex. It's just this annoying, nagging 
thing. And let me throw out there another TMI thing that I feel is loosely related, maybe, kinda, whatever. This is really, really TMI, and I hesitate to even mention this, but trying to be transparent with these videos as much as I am comfortable in doing so. But, um... Genitalia growth. I've talked about this in past videos. It is a thing that happens on T, clitoral growth to be more specific. And yeah, that was happening a lot in the first month or two and it has slowed down but it happened enough to the point that now, with the increase in libido, I guess, erections, morning wood, all that shit that I've heard about is actually a thing that I kind of experience now. And it's very awkward and weird and just annoying and what? I have a newfound respect for anyone who went through a testosterone-based puberty in their teens. It's just like, how the fuck do you deal with this shit? It's a lot of new experiences that put a lot of things into this new perspective that I never thought I would ever actually have firsthand, but I am having it first hand now and it's I don't know like I said I'm asexual I am not interested in sex really so to have all these experiences to have a nagging libido to deal with now is just an annoyance really for me but also interesting in a kind of like observational uh this is what other people deal with wow this is interesting this is new kind of way I mean it's interesting exploring this new shit that's going on with my body but at the same time it does have definitely an annoying side and I am still gonna make that other video eventually that's gonna be about libido changes in libido and stuff like that because I have experienced fluctuations in libido and shit related to that for various reasons throughout my life. And yeah, that's coming. Eventually, Ugh, my to-do list is so fucking long. But anyways, new life experiences, new perspective, blah, blah, blah. That is what you get with tea in addition to the physical shit. Yeah, lots of, lots of mental shit to process. But anyways, that's where I'm going to leave this month's update. I don't really have any much else to say, I don't think. I think I will switch to bi-monthly updates, so the next video will be five months on T. And in between all of that, I am recording my voice and taking pictures and stuff, so I am documenting stuff as I go. But you guys will have an official update five months on T. And yeah, hopefully I'll get some other video content out between now and then. But thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or reblogs or whatever the hell. And I'm working on a big project right now that I'm going to announce hopefully really soon. Keep your eyes peeled for that. And yeah, again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.